All right, so in the last example, we looked at how to use get and set to grab pixels from our image and to make changes to them. Um, and, but I mentioned that there are some downsides to that method. And the real downside is that the that is very slow. If our image is made out of thousands or millions of pixels, um, get handles a lot of stuff behind the scenes for us that makes it really convenient, but it also means that our sketch is not as um, optimized as it could be. So um, it seems like, oh, who cares? We should just use get and set. And there's a lot of cases where that's totally fine. Um, but for the kind of work we're doing, I think it's really important to take some time and understand understand this other way of doing the same thing that's going to be much faster. It's a brain bender. It takes some time to get used to, but I promise it really pays off um, over time. So I mentioned that our um, image is made of pixels, and the, the pixels uh, are really just a big list. So you might imagine that it would be two-dimensional with x and y coordinates, but actually our image is just one really big long list with all the RGB alpha values in order, and it looks kind of like this. So if we were to print the whole list of all the pixels, um, it would be a bunch of separate numbers, um, our first pixel starting at index 0, 1, 2, 3. And then our next pixel actually doesn't start at index um, 1, which we would imagine in our list, actually starts at index 4, and then so on and so on. So it takes a little math if we want to access those values directly, but the payoff is our program runs way faster. So um, I've drawn my image here, and what I'd like to do is um, change every 10 pixels on the screen. So I'm going to go ahead, uh, draw the image. Um, actually, so we'll do this a slightly different way. In the last example, we used get and set, which work great, and they access values from our canvas. But we can also access pixels directly from our image before we display it. So I'm going to delete the image command here, and now we have nothing on the screen. Um, but I'm going to say instead of load pixels, oops, load pixels, I'm going to say img.loadpixels. And this works exactly the same way, except instead of loading the pixels from our canvas, it loads pixels from the image itself. And then I'm going to use a for loop to walk through the x and y. So y will be at start at zero. Y will be um, end at img.height, so it's no longer the height of the screen. Those happen to be the same here, but it's our image. And then the same for x, img.width. And then um, we want to be able to access each pixels, red, green, blue, and alpha values from this list. So we need to do a couple of things here. The first is, because our list is not two-dimensional but one-dimensional, we need to convert our x and y coordinate into a, a spot in this really long list. And the, there's a formula for this. It's pretty simple. And if you're going to get one creative programming tattoo, I think this is the one to get, because this is like, you're going to use this all the time. So we'll create a variable called index. And um, the way you do this is it's y times width, well, the image width plus x. So this moves down row by row and then moves over to the x position. Um, now, there's one more thing that we need to add here, and that is um, our image or our pixels are each made of four values. So if we just use this formula, we're only going to offset by you know, one value per pixel. And instead, we want to then take this, I'm going to put it in parentheses, and multiply by four, RGBA. And that's going to then start me at the red value of each pixel in my big list. So this looks super unintuitive, but memorizing y time width plus x all multiplied by four, this is going to be something you're going to use a ton with this project and upcoming projects. So now that we have this index in our list of pixels, I can grab my red, green, and blue. So red then will be img.pixels at the index. And We'll just go ahead and make green, blue, and alpha. And then green is one over from red, so plus one, index plus one. Uh, blue is index plus two, and alpha is index plus three. So combined, these five lines of code are something you're going to use all the time with this project where you're um, converting an xy position to a position in the pixels array and then grabbing red, green, blue. You probably won't need alpha most of the time, but I wanted to show you how to do that. 
And then we can set pixels this way as well. So, um, oh, I should say, so this is equivalent to get. Um, this is kind of what get does behind the scenes, but this is much, much faster. And then we can change pixels. So I can say img.pixels at index equals zero. So the red will now be, that's our red will be zero. img.pixels index plus one. This is our blue, oh, green. Copy this plus two. We can make another color and that's our blue. Um, so this way we can change the red, green, and blue values. I'm going to just change also um, our alpha. It should already be 255, but we'll just go ahead and do that. Then once we're done here, outside of the for loop, um, we need to call update pixels again. And um, in this case, it would be img.updatePixels because we're working directly with that image. And then we can display the result. So the main difference here is that we're working with the image data directly instead of the canvas's pixels, but it would work the same way. Um, it, it's just different ways of kind of doing the same thing. And so now we can see, oh, huh, so I've changed all my pixels to blue, which is not what I wanted to do. Um, let's go by every 10 pixels. So um, I'm only modifying every 10th pixel in my image. And now, I don't know, maybe that's hard to see for you. We can make that a little brighter. Let's make it white. There we go, that's a little easier to see. So now every 10th pixel in this image is being changed and then it's being drawn on screen. So I realized that get and set are a much more intuitive way of thinking about this because um, it's just easier to think in XY coordinates, but we will do so much with pixels that it's worth practicing and kind of like getting in your, you know, buried in your brain, this idea of creating an index from NX and Y getting those pixels from that list and putting pixels back in that list. Um, in our next examples, then we'll start building filters with these ideas.